But they took said four lanes of traffic to 80 miles an hour and put them into an off ramp controlled by traffic lights. So you imagine how fast we're feeding in that. So in fact, following up on the slow back south here, 27 miles away. Russell, we're going to get started. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, 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 Take a recording, we're going to go over uh, some basics. Uh, we'll do that because uh, you guys are well versed. We have hundreds of hours of video recording and reading and that. But uh, so the, each new video we put out, new people are watching it all the time. So to uh, not leave anybody out, lose anybody, we'll do a little intro. And I'm uh, and Federal Postal Judge David Heitman for Colin Miller. And I'll let Russell introduce himself. Yes, uh, Russell Heitman, J. Colin Brewer, and we have done a synthetic ground challenge on the Electoral College Book rules for all 50 states. So, what we have done is we have taken the laws for the Electoral College Book process for the President of the United States of America, and we have we syntax that, which we will get into, and recorded them with the elections commissions for all 50 states, as well as Guam, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. And we did that through this corporation coin number, RE881-080255, US. We're also on recording with the White House Press, uh, the Council of Foreign Relations, Secretary of State's Office, and it has a letter of the regulatory as a foreign condition of the state, as well as the um, um, U.S. Secret Service. So, and for, for the audience, Russell is 40 and I'm 65. 41 now. 41. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 41 now. Yes. I'm 65. Russell's got about 50,000 hours of background on this, and I've got 82,000 hours of background. And we also have a team that's probably put in another quarter million hours that has worked with us over the last uh, 35 years. From different organizations and we did them different job assignments that they made four through a thousand hours of work on in the course of the year to come up with one hour of hard copy. Because three plus three equals six. There's only one correct answer, but in the world of infinity, you have the infinity being wrong. We have a world that's been built on the on fraud. All five thousand languages, eighty five hundred years worldwide has been modified. Uh, obstructed, manipulated, and so because of all these using an adverb, verb, world, adverb, adjective, pronoun, and pronoun, adverb, verb, they have completely bastardized all grammar on planet Earth, better known as Babylon. So the program that we did in 19, April, April 6, 1988, it broke the mathematical interface and grammar. First thing I did was go to William Rehnquist at the United States Supreme Court and charge him with crimes against America. And him and I became friends. We locked ourselves into a room for a couple hours, and I syntaxed everything he could put on the table. And from there, he taught me the secrets of the judges. At the same time, I, I syntaxed it and put it into correct parse syntax grammar. And Russell came on board with me in 1999, by the way, it was late, 1996. Yeah. And uh, I said, would you like to be Postmaster General of the World? 
I thought that was a little far fetched because he was, he was 20 years old, at the, or 21 years old at the time. I said, Well, it's going to take time to train. Uh, we've been, he's been working with me. We've been uh, we lived together for many years, uh, working 16 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, we have the Manly Hall, the Secret of All Ages. It's a book that's 12 inches by 18 inches by 2 inches thick. And when syntax, putting in two thirds of all the missing words, it's now a six inch thick book. And it's the only one like it on planet Earth, dealing with masons and uh, numerology, um, astrology, tarot, witchcraft. We broke all of it down. It's all nonsense. Put it all back together in quantum. So we have, we know the secrets of how things happen around this planet. We were blessed enough to get a chance to put the presentation on for four days at the Vatican. Uh, we have contracts with the Vatican for banking. Uh, they were very impressed. They had, when we came out of the post office, they had a 25 year old nun there. And she knew who we were on site. Hey, you guys can go anywhere you want. She took us around. And we yeah, said, personally, took us around, but everywhere. We got blown to gold balls. As we, as we, as we syntax Latin, Greek, and Arabic, at the Vatican, we picked up more and more nuns, bishops, and cardinals, followed us around, and we could read everything and put all the missing words in in that time. And from there, they created a seminar in Austin, Texas, where they teach this technology now. And after we wrote the work, Lord's Prayer was written and then posted up on the website, just like the two words, our father. Well, the word our is an adverb, makes father a verb. When you take what's the definition of our, well, that's a plural word. It means for the people, because our meant people, and then father meant creation. So it's for the for the people of the father. Say it backwards for the father of the people. All of you learned about God or the Father because your parents taught you, a church taught you, a minister, newspapers, magazines, Bibles. In other words, it's a it's the cycle of life. You are created you, because someone created you, and then you are taught by that person to create again. So it's a circle. And by taking every single phrase, that verb, verb, and turning it into a prepositional phrase, expanding upon the definitions, using all now, now time facts of the synonyms of now times facts. Like you'll have a, you can have the word international. If you look it up in the dictionary, it's going to give you one kind of a definition. When you look it up in the book of synonyms, it's going to give you many different other words that mean international. But in is now, T E R is terra, nation is people, A L is contract. So you have a no earth people contract. Now, if you want to go with quantum, you use the word global. Because it means it means to glow or to expand. A tail, tail means a contract. So you have an expanding contract. And the only way two or, people, two or more people come together is through contract, all citizens. And Earth is a spaceship. It's in a sea of, of space. So therefore, it's spaceship Earth. Water is not what you think it is. It's not a sea. We live in a sea of space. Water can be frozen, which is hard, just like land. Uh, you can walk on snow, which is water. You ski on snow. You can ice skate on water, which is a solid. Earth used to be a molten ball of lava. The water boils at 212 degrees at sea level. So water is not a sea issue. Water is a foreign entity to this planet. If you can, I don't know, comets are made of water. So when a comet fell into the heat of orbit of planet Earth because of its gravity, it rained. There's a big flood because the comet melted and created the seas. And that's how the seas became what they are. So when they talk about where does the sea start, where is the what is the bar of the courtroom, or where is the sea of water versus the land, that's nonsense. Earth is a vessel in the sea of space. So the sea of space makes all things on Earth maritime. All nine billion humans on planet Earth are vessels walking as cargo on the Earth, ashes to ashes, to ashes to dust. We came from the Earth, we go back to the Earth. Cycle of life. So we're just components. These buildings are vessels in dry dock because they are not native to the soil that they sit upon. A road is a foreign vessel in dry dock. It is not part of planet Earth. It came from the Earth, recreated, 
and then was poured into a road. Did the road pay docking fees? Does the road have its sea pass, sea treaty, road law? It was the road posted by the correct credentials. Because you have toll roads where you have somebody now claiming private contract on that road, taking a toll for the creation and upkeep of that road. That is now that's a private contract outside of what we call our international highways or the interstate. An inter no earth state. It's a no earth state condition of a road, so therefore no one claims contract to it because the people put it together. So we have an interstate system and we have a toll road system. Point being an everything's contract. Everything's contract. And something, someone owns everything. Even this panel holding. We came in here, this building, the people who allowed us to pay for the, this area of a closed box. And what goes on inside of our box is an enclosed area and it's a private contract. It's all about maritime vessel getting contracts with people. And, and the way we, we conduct ourselves. One of the main focuses of the director's party is we want to take a look at some of the social engineering and retrain that. These are some of the reasons why we run for president is because when you look at, if I ask the audience, when's the last time anybody of you saw a live unicorn? A talking cat? A talking mouse? Point being, these are the cartoons that are placed in front of us as we are young children. And it desensitizes our capability to discriminate what is genuine and authentic, and what is not. So they started at a young age programming us to, to take away our capabilities to, uh, to find correctness. And that's part of the reason why we in all that. And all cartoons are based on combat. There's always somebody fighting somebody else, the good and the evil, the cat and the mouse. So you're desensitized then you give you all your video games of violence, so the first thing you want to do is join the military and play a game. And the game is with real bullets and real bombs. Yeah. And today it's real videos controlling drones, which kill real people. And you know what real means? Our E means null and AL is contract. We have no contract. Because it's all written in that verb or there are no laws, rules, regulations, or codes. It's voluntary compliance. You are volunteering to participate in an illusion you, because you don't, you weren't told it was an illusion. You think you're fighting for a country. You think you're fighting for some, for freedom and democracy. Follow the money. You've heard that your whole life. And it's the bankers control everything through mortgages. And even when you think you've paid off something, you're still paying the military through taxes to make sure nobody plants rice in your backyard. So the point is, you're, you're under contract from cradle to grave to perform in a specific manner, and if you don't perform, even your automobile that you pay cash for is a certificate, which means debit of title. Debit is a pronoun, which means no, no, no. Of is an adverb making title a verb, so you have a debit of nothing. As long as you have your insurance tags on the car, keep it in a safe operating position under public safety, you now have the authority to go ahead and drive that automobile. If you do not have a one of the four items, the driver's license, which means you have physical capabilities, your safety stickers so you don't go ahead and create pollution to endanger other people's health, insurance. Now, in means no surety, which is contract, so your insurance policy is written in that verb, which means nobody has insurance, they just keep paying for it as they get the tax. So what we want to create is what we call surety. And so it's a different style so you can control and have any claims when you get down. And that way your values don't seem to be subjective interpretation. If you have a surety with a gold certificate, your $5,000 bond is worth $50,000 covering all the categories required by the state. Correct. You buy one $5,000 bond, you put a $5,000 into a $50,000 bond, you don't have to buy insurance for the rest of your life as long as you get into an accident. But if you injure somebody or get into an accident, then you are prone to, you know, if it exceeds your $50,000 cash, yeah and it comes out of your pocket. You can uh, set that up on a tripod. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll recording for everybody here, so. Yes. The, uh, we're gonna <clears throat> start this morning by going through the syntax operations. Well, the reason we're gonna do this is because when this is everything that we do it affects every topic of the dictionary. 
has to come from syntax. So you've got to start at a foundation before you can get into a topic. And we're not talking about subject matter because sub means no object, which is contract. We're not talking about a no contract, but we are talking about how to expose you to what no contract means to you and how many different ways you can participate in a no contract scenario. So you've got zero as a conjunction, which is and and or. Now, conjunctions don't modify anything. We'll get into that when we get into when we put put up you set it up here for one. We're going to get into the uh, the math problem when you see the math associated with the parts of speech. It, it's really clear as to how this was created. Then you also have the numbering system. We we use the numbering system because zero through nine is a natural phenomena of the parts of speech what we call syntax and how it operates. Somebody says, well, can we use ABCs? Yes, you can use ABCs, or you can use colored pens. As long as you take jurisdiction for what this key means here, then you have a position, and this, this it's easier to write a number on top of a, uh, a word than it is to write the entire word out, like the word adjective. Are you going to write the word adjective on top of the word red and still put in the rest of the sentence? It doesn't work that way because it's too, too crowded. And because we're only working with one, two, three, and four, because these here are the four conditions of the world of fiction, it makes it very simple because there's only four numbers to memorize in the operations to which they function under. So we use one for the adverb, because an adverb always comes in front of a verb. One comes before two, natural. One comes before three, because an adverb always comes in front of an adjective. Three <coughs> always comes in front of four, because an adjective always comes in front of a pronoun. Now, the, now, when you put two nouns together, black is a back and pen is a back. So black would become the adjective of pen. If you don't put a hyphen in there, it becomes an adjective pronoun. If you hyphenate it, then it's a pronoun. Like if I wrote, no, I got it here. If I write black ten, this would be a three, and this would be a four. If I put a hyphen in here, that turns this into a four. If I put a the word dog here in front of it. This thing would become an adverb now. This would become an adjective, making pen into a, a pronoun without the hyphen. If I put the hyphen in here, then both three and four become twos, which is a compound verb underlined. If I put the word four in front of here, now this is a preposition or a position. This is loyal article. And these both become seven, which is a fact. It's a compound fact. If I take the hyphen out, all authority runs backwards. Black pen, this would be a 3-4, the word the would not become an adverb, and the word form would become a pronoun. That's the only mathematical way it can happen. So frontwards and backwards, the math has to be correct. So when you're, this is only using one, one idea. Now, we have here the, uh, the deed of trust for California. 30, 12 states use the word mortgage, 38 use the word deed of trust. Now, instead of using numbers here, we use color codes. You can't see what the words are from back there, but you can see the color from back there. So the pink, it represents the adverb. The uh, verb is represented by green. So, and then the adjective and the pronoun are both left neutral <coughs> without coloring those. So you know it's always going to be, first word is going to be an adjective, second word is going to be a pronoun. These are how many mistakes are on your deed of trust. 4,700 of them to be exact. And if you, add, if you modify something or you color it, that's prejudice, that's perjury, because you're modifying the color factors. 
It's 300 words per page. Yes, sir. If you color it, it's what? We, by coloring it, they used to take the words and put them together after they saw us putting putting numbers on back in 2000. So the courts and the attorneys put the words touching each other, so there'd be no place to put the numbers. So we color coded it. <laughs> so we went back to single spacing again, so we put the numbers back in. Then when they realized that we could we could prove the fraud with the numbers, then they said, okay, we'll we'll we'll, we'll screw up and prove he doesn't know what he's doing. Now this is just how many adverbs appear in 300 words, which is illegal. <laughs> then there's your uh, prepaying writers that you put on the back, how many modifications they do. You see now, from, from back there, you can see the color. And from seeing the color, you can see the back. They have you, 4,700 mistakes, certified frontwards and backwards to be a trick of adverbs, adjectives, and turning all the facts into verbs. You're only allowed one verb in a sentence. Some of these sentences have eight verbs in them. Okay, then. The position, what we used to call the preposition, as we were taught when we were 10 years old. The preposition then went to what was called the article. But from the vowel two consonants, which is uh, AR, the word art itself is an illusion, creation. So the word art, A-R-T, the first two letters create the, is the word pickle, is also a word, but article is a no contract word because LC, a tick is small. This is contract. So it's a no small contract, it's an article. Uh, article would be my, it's for my pen, for his pen, for your pen, for her pen. You see, I changed, the, I changed the definition of the article, and I changed the ownership of the pen. If I say for your pen, for my pen, for his pen, for her pen, I change the the uh, uh, preposition now. Instead of the article of ownership, I change it again. We have we have 38 articles and 68 prepositions. 68 times 38 is 2,000 divided by two is nine, is 1,000, and 100 of them you will never use, not even in any any condition of logic. So you got 900 definitions for every word. And if I could change this times 900, 900 times 900 is 810,000, times 900 is 720 million, times 900 is 640 billion, times 900 is 540 trillion. So you can see, in a six word sentence, we're dealing with uh, 540 trillion variables for one sentence. And he says, well, it's impossible for us to do that. And that's just for one sentence. I says, well, I wrote a 95 uh, I mean, book here, and uh, it's all mathematically certified, forwards and backwards, and plus the language. All of our lawsuits, 12,000 of them, are done the same way. So don't tell me it can't be done. So then we have a logo, which is your article. We had to change that. LO is location, DI is original, AL is contract. This is called parsing. You want to learn about Parse, you can pick up a handbook from any religion that sings songs. And every single syllable that goes with a, a sound of music is dedicated to a Parse of a word. And then, therefore, if you pick up a handbook and then you get the book, the dictionary book by the Masons on Parse, you can look, at the, look up the definitions of all Parse's written into a hymn. Do you know that almost half of all the words in hymns mean the word no contract because it's a vowel, A, D, I, O, and U, followed by two consonants? So you're really singing no contract, no contract, no contract, no contract, no contract. And they're so brainwashed that when somebody shows you quantum and you actually understand it, you go into shock. Your brain rewrites itself in five minutes. You will stand there in goosebumps all over your body and you will shake because your brain is coming to awareness that you've been lied to since you were nine months old. And when you when you make that transition, you can never go back into the world of fiction. It just it just doesn't happen. You pick up a newspaper, a magazine, anything document that's handed to you to read, 
the only thing you can do is syntax it. When you realize how big the lie is, how many, how the words have been misrepresented, this really a, a, has an effect on your on your belief system. It's very humbling. Now the, the seventh preposition was always in front of the the article, which was in front of the the uh, pronoun, uh, yeah. the noun, which is a n o u n, which means no no. So if you have no position, preposition, because pre p r e p r a e i o u you mean no. I don't care what word you're talking about. You got practice. Attorneys have a practice. A T T no contract. You need practice. P R A. T I is title. C E is contract. No, no, no title contract is really practice. And then you have a article, which is an illusion contract. And then you have a. They told you if you have no position and you have no small contract and you have no no. And they advertised it to you, and you always thought prepositional phrases were cool. <laughs> but, you, but you were desensitized. Yeah. You've been desensitized at such, at such a young age that you can't assimilate what's genuine and what's authentic. And so this is why we're trying to bring the consciousness up to the knowledge to the people, and then give people a chance to go us in, to make those changes so we take out those subliminal messages that, so we can have authentic, authenticity in our thinking, so we don't go to war, we don't create all the stress and have tolerance for the people. Then the next thing they, they did to us was they used pastime words, which was ED, all words ending in ED, and the word from. Future time words were pre and to, TO. And so anything that's in the future doesn't exist. The past always comes before the future, just like eight comes in front of nine. So we accounted for the, the ten parts of speech, but where's your now time? And they never told you where now time is, and you always live in now time. You can only be damaged in now time. You only exist in now time. So you had to change your volition of thinking. Yes, sir. Okay. N O W. Does N O does that not like eliminate now time? I'm, I was I use current, but okay. Okay. current is good. But you put a big song over the, you put a song. It, it just, you just know, and now, yeah. It's okay, it. here we have the word known, right? This comes from knowledge. Here you have a ledger, and here you have now time ledger, and you have to know what you're doing for your map, because map is an app, is a, no one's ever gone to war over a math problem in the history of math time, so math is a correct factor, especially when you're going to deal with a ledger. When you have the word now, K-N-O-W, you, you, you have the word own, you have now time, and you have the word no, K-N-O-W. Now you have to put, this we went research, and you have to have a line over O-W that's Russian. Which makes A E I O and U and sometimes W, sometimes Y. My, try, see, we're trying. This becomes a vowel now. But when you're dealing with, with the W factor, you have law, which is fiction, and then you have law, which is fact, with that line over AW at 1775, or 1750, Russia. And then they struck it. They struck it. And so if you put that over the OW people now. Same thing, yeah. right. And that captures that. Okay. So you don't have the word no. Oh, okay. I didn't well, okay. Yeah. Okay. These are these are secrets. Look at the word dip bomb. You you you, have, you, you have uh th ONG. Yeah, our in English language our pH is F, but in all most of all foreign languages that use the ABC alphabet use the word F letter F for pH. Yeah. And they drop that. A colon in English is F O N. E. Good question. But if you underline it, is it? And it's not underline, you have to put the line above the O W. Put the line above the O W. Same thing for law. Okay. It creates a different problem. What was that? Every dictionary that's published has this information 
but who reads a dictionary? When was the last time you read your prefixes or your suffixes or your styles manual in a dictionary? You know your big Webster's dictionary, that one that's six inches thick? Last one published was 1906. And it has all this information in it. In 1906 is when all the laws in the United States, which were, were handled by, by numbers, like the Sherman Law, were then transferred into codes, specific codes, with a numbering system on it, because numbers could be very easily, uh, it was easier to catalog. And that's when the Webster's Dictionary was also cataloged with the styles manual. Now, if you think the Webster's six inch dictionary, the Punkin Webster's Dictionary, which is also six inches thick, or Encyclopedia Britannica's Dictionary is six inches thick, you have three two inch volumes. We have a World Book, which is three two inch volumes. Oxford. The Oxford is about a foot thick, but the Cornell University Dictionary is four feet thick. And what they did there is they took every every word on planet Earth. Now every word was also identified by a judge, established a definition of a word because of the condition of how it was used. Give me an example. Here I have here I have a pen, P E N. It's used for writing. If you look up any dictionary, it's going to say it's a writing instrument. But if I took this pen and I put it into a prison system, the next guy using it is going to do this, or he's going to do this and make a stabbing tool out of it. So now it's a concealed weapon for stabbing somebody and causing harm. You get 10 years in prison for a concealed weapon, 10 years for assault with a concealed with a deadly weapon. So you get a 20 year prison sentence because you play games with the word pen. So be careful who you talk to, how you present yourself, because you could go on yourself up in jail real easy. My buddy did that. Police officer pulls him over. He's, he's an electrician. He's got copper in his car because he cuts off, he just put in a 600 amp system. So he's got copper wires, one inch in diameter, about the A long, but he's got duct tape tied around the end because when you pull the heavy wire through the, through the cables, which are four inches in diameter, you've got to put duct tape around a rope and then pull it through. When you get it to the other end, you cut it off with your big clippers. He's got the scrap laying in his car to go to the junkyard. This is paying three eight five pound per uh, copper. So the cop says, Well, you have a club. <laughs> he says, No, it's scrap copper. He says, No, it's a concealed weapon. I'm gonna give you a ticket for 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 carrying a concealed weapon in your car. He says, Oh, I suppose you're gonna do the same thing with my ballpoint pen because you can stab somebody with oh, and now you're confessing that you have a pen with twenty five hundred dollar fine, you had to pay it. 30 days in jail, too, for playing games. But I happened to be at that specific hearing. And that happened in, in, in Duluth, Minnesota, at the court. And guess what they happened? The judge, I'm in there, and I introduce myself as a federal judge. So the judge gets up, and he walks outside. His brother-in-law is there, who's a plumber. He says, here, put my robe on. <laughs> Go in there and take 2,500 bucks off this guy and put him in jail for 30 days. So the plumber puts on his, his, his brother-in-law's robe, and I'm out there standing right next to him, I listen to know what's gonna happen next. And he walks in there and says, Bailiff, cut, take this man and put him in jail for 30 days on a $2,500 fine, because he knew he had $2,500 cash on him, and they brought him in because he just sold his motorcycle. And after that happened, I went down to see Barbara Crabb at the federal court in Madison, Wisconsin, and Lake County was shut down. They fired all the people that were working in the court system, they were shut down for six weeks because of that little incident that took place. Showing that there were no laws, rules, regulations, or code. This building here is a vessel and dry dock for the courthouse. And in their vessel and dry dock, they weren't on the state of Wisconsin. You know what the word state of Wisconsin, state of California means? It's the name of the vessel of the courthouse in dry dock. You live in the territory of California, uh, the California territory, folks. You live in the territory of Georgia, territory of Wisconsin. Norway. All road signs, all road signs are the distance between one vessel in dry dock called a courthouse and another vessel in dry dock called a courthouse. That's how those road signs got up there with the numbers on them. You don't blame me? Go out and measure your highways and check to see where you're your county seat is where the courthouse is for the next courthouse. 
federal courthouse to federal courthouse, or state courthouse between counties. That's why you have county lines, different road names and distances. But on that name, that road is going to be a courthouse. That's how they break everything up. So we have methods around that, which I'll get into. Now, this is all part of the tricks and traps that are so each road is basically assigned to a courthouse. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. And that's why when you get a speeding ticket, it, it always on your speeding ticket, the sheriff or the high pro on the patrol always puts the model smile marker for that. Right. Uh, so it shows you what jurisdiction you're in based on that mile marker okay. location. Not that anybody but has a secondary level of accuracy. And how does accuracy spell ACC? No contract. Vowel two consonants. Remember that as I speak, I will use words that are a vowel two consonants. But I'm saying that because these are no contract words and I will stop myself and identify why it happens. Because every law, rule, regulation, and code, your traffic tickets have 400 mistakes on them. Or grammatics, mistakes. And if you hold it up to the light, you have a watermark box around both sides of it. Everything on your ticket is in a box, which is in a closed area and can't be considered. Therefore, because the law written for the number in the box is also written in adverb verb and says nothing. So because you have all these different levels of fiction on top of fiction, the oath of office for every single politician, every single police officer, every single uh, military, everything is based on a dangling participle verb. And if you have a dangling participle verb, it's illegal to end the sentence that way. But when you go into the into the mechanics of the writing that is used, all the advertising that's put up on the in, in the courthouses, every single one of them go back to a no contract scenario. Use it use a vowel and two consonants as a no contract scenario. Russell and I looked up every single word in English language under A E I O and U for vowel two consonants and all the synonyms and all the different definitions. That's an 8,000 hour exercise. Him and I worked on just that one thing for two years for doing nothing else. Side by side, 16 hours a day to get that and prove that fact. And we have proved that fact in any other translation to any other language. Because my website's written in 150 different languages with no translation deviation. If a language does not, a Hebrew does not have A, E, I, O, and U because they're hollow sounds. So we have to put those back in. But they don't use prepositional phrases either. So we leave our own prepositional phrases in the location. Arabic doesn't use prepositional phrases. So we put in the prepositional phrases and we do it in a mechanical way. We don't do it as a sentence structure horizontal. We do it like this. So when we, were, when we write bank contracts in Arabic and we do the translation, the English sentence will be frontwards and backwards horizontally, and when we write the Arabic and we're going from nation to nation for global and global stuff, we put their sentences like this and let the, the people contracting in, postmaster bankers, write in their facts this way. That would be using the deviation between English and Arabic when we do the uh, global finances. I noticed you writing everything in caps. Um, Additional refund. It's called shout. Now a shout is a command. It's not an order, because the word order is spelled O-R-D. It means no contract. That's why everything written in the laws are written in upper, or upper and lower case because they're whispers. And also in adverb verbs, so they say nothing at any time. Except for in one spot, and that's in Federal Rule Civil Procedure 44.1, and they go like this. This deals with foreign courts, they go. Oh, the court, yeah. In what court? That's on the just well, no, this is what it says. And this is under Federal Civil Procedure 44.1 under foreign judges. Because all judges fly yellow fringe flags or vertically suspended flags. So they paint the flag vertically this way so it suspends the contract within the courtroom. Mm -hmm. So they go, laws of boxing, eliminate the T, key court, not jury, bracket, bracket. 
This is why we put judges in judges' boxes and jury in jury boxes. So anything they say can't be considered. We can't be seen or heard. When you have the word he court, he is an adverb making court into a verb. Where are you going to put the verb court? State of California. I was an adverb making California dang and bars a verb. So you get a verb court for a verb country. Then you have not, uh, not jury. Yeah. Well, you don't have, or no, or no jury. It says not <laughs> okay, what they say. And then no is a negative. You can't prove a negative of anything. J-U means no. And the word R-Y is contract. And that's the only place in the law that you're going to see the capital shall. And it's in every civil war, civil procedure for every state. Then when you're dealing, when you write, you want to learn how to syntax, or how to creatively write syntax, you do it vertical until your brain can adapt. So you make flashcards for the, of the, is, are, with, with the, of the, now, so it's for the, um, for the knowledge. So this would be a claimant's knowledge. Claimant's knowledge of the, of the facts is or are with the claim possessive claim. See, with is a possessive. So you have a, a, a possessive claim because as an individual, you look around the room and you accumulate information. There's a thousand pieces of information in this room that you can see. Now you're going to pick, take that information and store it in your computer, your brain. It's like we have our computers. We put information into it. You have to think of what you want to do in the form of facts that you put into your computer. And this is the is are is thinking, which means motion. That's why the courts have you file motions because you must think, and you have to establish your knowledge. Doesn't the judge say, "Did you go to school? Do you have a job? Can you drive a car?" He walks you through a series of questions to establish your ability of education, how much educational facts you have absorbed. And then are you going to understand how to motion those facts into a thinking condition of a claim when he says, do you understand? He just asked you a whole series of adverb verb questions that said nothing in a box on a different plane. As he's sitting up here in plane number one, you know, we're in plane number five. Here's the uh, petitioner and the Wassilie for the claimant. And a defendant. <laughs> so you're going to go ahead and, and say, yeah, I understand. And then you say, you understand. UN means no. PDR is contract. Stand is standing. So you have no contract standing. Now you're mute before the court. What happens when you're mute before the court? Uh, then the judge can't see or hear you and they from the prosecution. So with the possessive claim of the contract, these prepositional phrases are cause, consequence, the verb of thinking, possession assignment, possession assignment, possession assignment. Okay. See, now we're going, to break, we're going to break this down further with the possession claim of a contract. Well, with the correct sentence, structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar of the rules, Regulations, codes, uh, with the venue, or wait, with the uh, with the avoidance by the perjury. Now, if you read this backwards, by becomes for, with becomes of, 
Then you bring in your verb as your second condition, and of is with, with is of, and it becomes these are the opposite prepositions. So for the perjury of the avoid of the avoidance is with the rules, regulations, and codes of the correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, with the contract of the possessive claim with the facts by the claimant's knowledge. See, now the authority going backwards says the same thing as the authority going frontwards. The unique thing about our technology is all these facts are still facts. And the order of operations going backwards is just like having a math problem. If we go to a math problem, um, on the knowledge, uh, that, um, on the knowledge that be, yes, uh, you can. Okay, but you have it's a compound. It's a compound, so you're okay. Okay. If it was now, that would be different. So you have one plus two equals three, and three minus two equals one. See, so we're going to reduce this into linear mathematics. Now, when you do a math problem, you've got a whole number coming in, you've got a whole number coming out, you've got a whole number conclusion, and you've got a whole number to start with to work the problem backwards. So these are facts. Now, an equal sign, and I don't care what type of math you want to do, add, subtract, multiply, divide, sine, cosine, tangent, uh, trigonometry, calculus, equal signs do not affect any of the math that you're doing. So they're conclusions. Yes. So they're going to be, they're, they're going to be your, your conjunctions. Because they don't have any modifications to change anything in the formula. Now you have a plus, you have a, a plus two, and you've got a negative two. Well, when you do graphing in school, and you, you graph that you are in motion going across your number systems. So you think you're going from plus to minus, or minus to plus, these are called verbs. The, the two, we, we gave that the verb thinking. Now, if we factor that out, then what we have left is we have a plus and a minus, and that was called the, the preposition or the position. For the bridge is over the water, for the water is under the bridge over and under opposite prepositions, and both pictures are identical. And that's what we're doing here, is we're, we're showing you if it's true for a picture, then it's true for the, for the values of the logic of sentence structuring as well. Then when we translate it to any other foreign language on planet Earth, we use the same things. We establish, when I, when I broke the mathematical interface between the Chinese language with 10,000 symbols, and what their, what their prepositional phrases were, I said, do you have a preface, do you have a symbol for the word for? And they said, yeah, we do. We have a, a symbol for the word of. We have a symbol for the, for the word with, and a symbol for the word by. And he said, yes, these are the symbols. You have a symbol for the word the, an article. He said, yes. Okay, the only thing I had to do is plug in the, the noun of the symbol, like what is a pen, and when I asked, asked the symbol through my Google Translator, it, it gave me the English translation. So when I went to uh, China, I took my, my phone, I put my Google Translator thing on, put the screw on my neck, get into a cab, and I said, I want to go to uh, the Summer Palace. And his phone translated my English into, I want to go to the Summer Palace, and it printed it out so they could read it in Chinese, Mandarin. And he spoke back to me and told me what the fare was in Chinese. And then the phone spoke to me in English, telling me what the fare was to go there. 
<laughs> Just like the Universal Translators on Star Trek, you know, where you wear a badge, which is a Universal Translator. And you know what? I, I went around, it's been 22 days, the first time in China, and 10 days in Hong Kong and, and Macau at the casinos uh, for two more days, and I didn't have trouble with anybody. I even had translators assigned to me, but I could do quite well on my own. I did the same thing in France, Germany, and Italy, Switzerland, Norway. Uh, so it's that, that Google Universal Translator is really unique. Now using that as a base science, they said you know, we couldn't write an English translation in quantum for Chinese in nine months. I did it in 45 minutes over lunch. How? I went ahead and I established the, the symbols for these words. The symbol for the, a, and an, or this also. And then whatever the fact was, Every English fact has a, has a Chinese translated word. And so I could translate the technology that I was there over lunch and have it printed out immediately. And, and uh, the computer did all the work for me through the uh, my Google Translator. I just had to organize how the program was to be read. And I printed out these patents for the, the technicians, which only spoke Chinese. And this then they said, can you do this in Russian? I says, yeah, control shift. Took all everything that I had just put in the computer in Chinese and translated it into Russian. Then I said, well, what about German? Or it's our third biggest trade partner. Yeah, four minutes later, computer printed out all this stuff in German. How about Italy? Spanish, Arabic, Indian, Thai, uh, Japanese. And this thing, in a matter of seconds, computer rewrote everything mathematically certified frontwards and backwards, and on my website is 150 different languages frontwards and backwards on a global basis. I've got university professors from their respected from them or from, from their respected countries screaming at me that you can't do this. You can't you can't establish these secrets because you just disqualified our universities, our colleges. And so what's that? I'm just going to see what that is. Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a, this year is a, it's a game, it's a math problem. The average person takes two hours to figure out. Can, can anybody figure that out? Just out of curiosity. Well, first we've got to finish this. Okay, you finish that and then we'll do the And this. So, these as the parts of speech. This was a mathematical interface. You know, I spent three years, a thousand hours, a thousand days working out this to get my children back. The judge said to me, when you can show me the mathematical interface and grammar, you will be able to write a lawsuit to get your children back and not make a fool of yourself. And the first thing I did was prosecute that judge and have him disbarred. I got my kids back. So the, the, uh, the technology was, was sound. And the secret math interface on all 5,000 languages was 1 plus 2 equals 3, 3 minus 2 equals 1. The smallest of things, the simplest of things was the answer. And it was an elusive of human beings for 8,500 years. Never figured it out. And from this one math problem, I could prove everything that was wrong, everything that was right. And over, I've written 23 books now, put up a 400-page website, and done 2,500 seminars. I've done uh, 38 live television shows, wrote the programs on the 9-11 disaster, and got all the settlements, disqualified 38 illegal lawsuits from the 9-11 case, got independence for Hawaii, wrote the lawsuit that won $880,000 from England for the Solomon Island massacre of 1929 that nobody would touch until 2002 when I was over there and I went ahead and broke the code on the case wrote the lawsuit and was awarded in 2012 that the Hawaiian, the Solomon Island Aquatic Canal survivors received $880 million in England. And when we were at the United Nations and David presented himself as a witness, I can tell you that they knew who he was. They said, you're the guy. And we presented our bank charters because we were presenting our bank charters in quantum grammar called the Global Banking Constitution to all nations on the planet, giving away, you know, to show them what technology is coming how we're going to be moving money, what were the qualifications for moving values from point A to point B, and what were the criteria for countries to engage with that. 
or to continue with that so that can make it work. When people take and they try to do things horizontally, they're trying to over, overwrite a horizontal uh, romance with your left brain. Your left brain is romance. Your, your right brain, however, is mathematics, is your logic center. So when I gave you this in vertical rather than horizontal, I showed you a math problem. Your brain is going to grasp this on your left, in your, in your right brain, and it's going to understand that if you make flashcards, put them on the ground, write words and move the words around so you're not writing. Now, writing is a, is a skill. It's an art form, just like art. But when you put things into, a, into flashcards and blocks on the ground, your mind is going to start forming puzzles. It's going to look at it as a puzzle of blocks. Just like when you play with Legos. I don't care if you're an adult. You sit out with your grandkids, you're gonna build you're gonna build something with Legos or, or Lincoln logs because it's mathematics and it's relaxing to you because you can't lie about a math problem. You can't lie about mechanics. So this goes in to your logic side of the brain. The minute you, you get this, it overwrites your left side, and you can't look at anything without looking at it from a mathematical procedure. Then when you read our numbering codes. On when we when you syntax our lawsuits, you get an idea. We have a let's see. Go ahead. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what this means is, do you guys know the answer? You know, you know the answer, don't you? Your numbers are your facts. If you don't have Put your functions with total plus and with the equal sign in the right location, you get the wrong answer. Same thing all holds true with, with, with uh, with the order of operation of words. So you have four plus five equals three to the second. All right, because nine equals nine. So if you drop out the procedure. You you, do, you don't do the correct procedure, you can't come up with the right conclusion. Because <clears throat> 9 equals 9. So what we're showing you is that the function of how we move things around is relevant to how you're going to contract and how people contract when, when you're deciding to make a vote. Because if you have the wrong function, you're going to get the wrong outcome over and over and over again. So putting in the right correct variable and the right function on how to vote for president as a citizen of this country is one of the most valuable things you can know. Because then you can find out who actually has your best concerns in mind. Because as a public servant, that's what we have to be cognizant of. We can show you a construct, but as we put ourselves in the public position and become public servants, then the values of what we have to do change. So we need to be cognizant of that. So you have 3,800 different branches of government controlled by the Postmaster General. The president is no more than a puppet. He's where you direct your attention to redirect your anger. So he takes all the flack. That's why he becomes famous. Let me show you how the illusion works so you can see it in your own minds. The Super Bowl was on February 1st. They got everybody in the United States looking at Super Bowl, and then they had to do a little tiny announcement at 2 o'clock on Super Bowl Sunday, which nobody paid attention to. They switch out postmaster generals. But they got everybody looking at the Super Bowl, and nobody's paying attention to what's really going on, which is the shipping wars that you are all in. So, go ahead, I won't do it. The real game. December 12, 2012. Now, I have prosecuted all the federal judges in Honolulu, Hawaii. I've been in Honolulu, Hawaii since 1995. I was elected in 1997 to be the king of Hawaii when all the components, the 72 families, got together and appointed me to be the king of Hawaii because I wrote the Constitution for Hawaii. There was one at The Hague, and from that, Bill Clinton had to apologize to Hawaii for stealing the Hawaiian Islands in 1893 and again in 1959 for statehood. Now, a unique thing took place. The United States of America in 1893 was in bankruptcy. First bankruptcy was in September 17, 1782. It was domestic in Pennsylvania. 
Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And seven years later, that expired because it was on September 17, 1789. Rothschild then buys the, the bankruptcy of England, which is international, turned into a 70-year international bankruptcy. That runs to September 17, 1859. Plus 45 day trust law comes up to November 2nd, presidential election day. Before the trust expired, we had to elect a new trustee for the trust, which was Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln doesn't take office until 90 days later, from November 2nd, until February 2nd, 1860, three day rescission law, or some third gets bombed, and we now create the Civil War. Now, when the South left the North, the South was sovereign. They were not in bankruptcy. Because the bankruptcy ended for the North, the North was sovereign. So we have two sovereign nations being split in half. The United States North was now, had no cash, but the South had gold, silver, tobacco, and cotton. And had trade with, with Europe, so they were very rich. And they had their, everybody, because of the money, had education. They had military schools, and were very, uh, he was a really good general, had good education. And the North had arrogance, but they had the machinery. So the North renewed the bankruptcy, Lincoln did, for another 70 years. Ran, they pick up five states. Yeah, so they lost the five, and so they picked up Indiana, Ohio, Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan. And so we went ahead and uh, we're they still had 13 states that were involved with the North, and then the, the southern states were sovereign under gold and silver, because they had gold and silver banking, where the North had debt banking with bankruptcy. So during the course of the war, uh, President Grant was the Postmaster General, who was also a military general. Lincoln gets assassinated, so the Postmaster General was elected to the presidency. Benjamin Franklin was the first Postmaster General, so he goes on the $100 vote because the decimal point for 100 is 1.00. Grant was the Postmaster General of the country divided in half, who became a president, so he went on a $50 bill. Lincoln was the first uh, Postmaster General of Illinois for 20 years, so he was put on the penny, and he are on the $5 bill, but he went on the penny as the first uh, Postmaster who became the in charge of the second international bankruptcy. So that's why he's on the penny and the five. Lincoln got, the, I mean, uh, Washington got the quarter and the one dollar bill. Now, the reason he's on the one dollar bill is he was only a letter carrier for the Continental Congress, and a letter carrier is only one hundredth the importance of a postmaster general. So he wound up on the one dollar bill. But he was also a 30, 40 degree Mason, Freemason, so therefore the Masonic, all the information on the one dollar bill is Masonic. And then Jackson was the, the 20, and Jefferson was on the two, because he was the postmaster general, who became the second. Uh, president, and the 20 for 20. And Hamilton was the 10th postmaster general for the $10 bill. And that's how those got placed in location. <clears throat> now you take the you take the bankruptcy, September 17, 1789, 1859, and 70 years later is September 17, 1929, plus 45 days, is November 2nd, 1929. But you have to give five day notice if you're going to cancel your contract, your trust. So England says we're closing all banks and credit unions on October 29, 1929. And the stock market is marching at 95 to 5 and it crashes because the money has been inflated for every five dollars, it'd be a hundred dollars. And when they went to collect, there was no money, so it collapsed the banks for the next 10 years. And there was no money in the United States. Then in 1939, the war breaks out. And we go ahead and uh, get ourselves into World War II. Uh, World War II was they, uh, Roosevelt needed to get the people involved because we were an isolated country. Fascism had to be stopped because of the Nazis, but the, they, Congress didn't have any way to get the United States involved. So we go back to Hawaii. When was the New World Order created? October 22, 1871. Ross Trout goes to Hawaii because Hawaii was the center of the coal, C-O-A-L, coal industry in the Pacific Ocean. No steamer could go from, from the Asia to the west coast of California without stopping in Hawaii for coal. 
the British, the Portuguese, the French, Spaniards, Spaniards and the United States, and the Germans all wanted to control of Hawaii. So, on the 20s, on uh, October 22nd, 1871, the banking started the New World Order to take over Hawaii. So they took all the gold and silver because whaling was a thousand whalings, 200,000 whales a year taken in the Hawaiian Islands. And they went ahead and they put money in place. All the money had uh, railroad trains, stagecoaches, Pony Express, and, and shipping pictures on all the money. So we're dealing with transportation. Uh, the post office controls the uh, DOT, Department of Transportation, Department of Trans, uh, and the post office also, also controls the treasury. This is a worldwide issue. By the way. So the post office, called the Universal Postal Union, goes ahead and captures Hawaii first, to control the entire Pacific. Then, in, in, eight, in uh, one year after that, under Title 46, Chapter 781, which is one year maritime law of salvage, it's the 22nd of October, 1872. Now you have 45 day trust law, and it's December 6th, which is the end of the, of the salvage claim. And on December 6, 1872, King Kamehameha V, which is the last reigning monarch to control all the land in Hawaii uh, under the Bishop's Trust, is killed by assassination poison. So now they have the, the Masons go ahead and they publish an article in the newspaper on January 8th ordering all Masons on the Hawaiian Islands to come to Honolulu to Lodge Number One. Lodge Number One is also the Supreme Court of Hawaii. Immigrations, Customs, and the center of the post office for the Hawaiian Islands, also the center bank of Hawaii. All done in one building right across the street from the Iwani Palace. Something with there's underground tunnel that connects it. Now, all the queens and kings of the Hawaiian Islands, when they became queens and kings, had to join the Eastern Star and Masons. The minute you become an Eastern Star and Mason, you must surrender your kingship, queenship, or presidency. So therefore, Queen Iolani was not a queen anymore. She was an Eastern Star of 34th degree as a figurehead speaker under the puppet master of the Postmaster General, which was across the street. The Postmaster General in, in 1873 now publishes an article to have all Masons come to the Elani Palace. Now, all records in Hawaii were destroyed from 1869 to 1875. So, Hightower and I went to the Archive Center looking for information. And all there was was a 3 by 5 card in the, in the card catalog that had a number on it. A number was a microfiche number. A microfiche number led to the newspaper published on January 8, 1873. We were looking for the dimension of the flag. The flag then was eight stripes, and today's Hawaiian flag only has seven, so it was the long flag. So now you go ahead, and while he's looking at the flag, I'm like looking at the obituaries down below in German, French, Portuguese, and English, ordering all Masons in the Hawaiian Islands because there was a Masonic eye and a Masonic level to order all the Masons to come to, the, uh, to Lodge Number One to pay homage to King. Uh, uh, King Kamea, the fifth, exactly 45 days after he dies. So it takes it. Published on the 8th, three days by steamer to go out to Kona and Hilo. Three days back. That's 6. 86 is 14. And uh, on the January 14th is the 45th day after December 6th. Now you go ahead and you have a three-day rescission law. The three-day rescission law goes back 6,500 years in history. All the way back to 4700 BC, when the Pharaoh set this up. And he was a Mason. This is, these are timelines that have never changed. 70 year international bank is a 6,500 year old law. Thank goodness. And, and because I'm a Mason, the third, I'm a 92nd degree Mason, by the way, because I have the only math code translation of all the Masonic history of the, of the world. Okay, now, the well, we're up to January 14, 1873. We have three-day rescission law goes into effect 
which means on January 17, 1873, the 20-year death moratorium that was established by King Kamehameha I in 1848 was into effect. And in 1848, King Kamehameha I said, a white man from America will come to Hawaii and set Hawaiian free with a bird. When I went to Hawaii in May of 1995, a wild female sparrow flew out of a tree, landed on the end of the and sat there for two hours and 45 minutes. As I wrote the Constitution for the Hawaiian Islands, and Bill Clinton had to sign it, and Hawaii got the independence on that day. And from there, I was elected to be the king of Hawaii. But going back to 1890, 18, 18, 1873, the 20-year moratorium goes into effect, and now it's 1893, January 17th. U.S. troop ship pulls in, get cold, like they do every, every day. Postmaster General tells the Admiral, who's a Mason, we're going to take over the Hawaiian Islands now. It's been 20 years. All Hawaiians are dead because their names are capitalized. Yeah. And so... In 1893, Hawaii then becomes a territory of the United States. We bring our troops on shore to protect the Hawaiian Islands so that nobody else could cross the Pacific without our permission or by our or C-O-A-L. It's all about power. Then you go ahead and you add another 70 years, 1872, that would have October 22nd, plus 45 days, is, is uh, December 7th. And seven year international bankruptcy, December 7, 1941, bombing Pearl Harbor. The end of the first international bankruptcy for the Postmaster General of, of Tokyo and the Postmaster General of Honolulu, Hawaii, go to war. But they jumped the timeline. It was 8 o'clock in the morning, this is when it expired. And the pilot, Captain Pilot, of the, of the attack group wanted to make a statement at the rising sun at 6 30, 90 minutes too early, and bombed. Only postal vessels. The post office. And every. Yeah. And the post office. And the post office. And the post office. And the post office. And the post the post office. And 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 the And the post office. And the post And I've got the video of the Postmaster General in 1945 slapping a $1 stamp on the one on a little boy and signing his name across it, smiling into the camera, for sending the airmail back to Tokyo, back to Japan just to make it legal. And that ended the war. So now you know the rest of the story. It's kind of 70. Okay. Then you go 70 years from, from Pearl Harbor Day, and it's 2011, Pearl Harbor Day. And no law becomes legal for 90 days, which is March 5th. We have a three-day rescission law, which is March 8th, 2012. And then there's we have a one-year moratorium under salvage claim, which is March 8th, 2013. Now, 2013, my federal building that has been standing in Wailuku, Hawaii, where I live, and was my federal court was there to prosecute the federal judges and the state judges for treason against the people through fictitious conveyance of language. And, and uh, the, uh, the year before that, one of your salaries, Dave and I walked into the post office. Oh, we were, we, yeah. we'll get to that after we finish this. The, um, the name of the, the judge was Susan O.K. Mulloway. She was appointed by President Obama. And when I went to court with 22 of my foreclosure clients in Honolulu, the judge says, well, who are all these people? He says, well, they're my clients. I said, by the way, Judge, judge Kern, I have a, have a warrant for your arrest. You have a warrant for my arrest. This was the Dorothy Lamb case 12 years ago. He goes, oh, my God. He says, you're that David with me. He goes, you're the federal judge of the appointment. And you prosecuted 22 judges, 12 U.S. attorneys, and two clerks for treason against the people, and was upheld by the United States Supreme Court in The Hague in a conference call. The three lasted three hours and 15 minutes. That, that legalized my federal judge position, my, my king position in Hawaii. But I'm only a king of grammar, just grammar. The grammar controls contract, and contract owns everything. That's how I got that. So then we went ahead and uh, 
Judge Kobachi uh, was walking in. And I said, you know, I got a warrant for your arrest too. He turns right around and walks back out, and then Mulloway comes walking in and says, I know you don't have a warrant for my arrest because I was appointed by Obama. He says, well, okay. So be back on, on, on the 17th of April and bring all your people with you. So we showed up. And all the judges were on the airplane in San Francisco, Roth Islands. They couldn't appear in court. So they locked down the courthouse. But I had an order open the courthouse up, so I walked down the clerk's office, I filed and ordered the courthouse open as the chief federal judge of the courthouse, which gave me jurisdiction over all the Hawaiian Islands and as the chief federal postal judge. And I was the chief federal postal judge at that point when we did that. Then Mulloway comes back with this little thing here, order, which means no contract, Directing David Wood Miller as a long well care dead person to show cause. Two is an adverb in future name and can show cause to be mentioned the pronoun. Why he, adverb verb, not calling me a verb, should not, adverb verb, be required, no contract in past tense. Uh, two is an adverb in future tense, obtain, OB means no obtain, which is an adjective of lead. Of court, of an adverb making court a verb, before filing, adverb verb, any new actions. Any is an adverb, new is an adjective, an action then becomes a no contract pronoun. So then I went in and I syntax this here, showing how many mistakes they made, and then wrote a lawsuit and sued her for fraud and filed this with uh, President Obama saying, no, you appointed yourself a judge with a second grade reading level, send a registered mail, so it's a registered mail case. And I says, I'm the chief federal judge, and she has no authorization to battle. So I hereby charge her with treason against the people, as I am the king of Hawaii to get off my island. Welcome to the post office. Is she going? Out of Pearl. Huh? Is she going? Um, she's, she's still in the federal courthouse. It always said federal courthouse. On that day, they took the federal courthouse and they chopped it off the word off the court building. Now it's just called United States Courthouse. United means no citizen. The ED is in past time. So it's a no citizen condition of the state as an adjective of the courthouse. Mm -hmm. So therefore it's an adjective, adjective pronoun, which means nothing. It's a no citizen courthouse, not affiliated with America, because it's a vessel in dry dock. As long as she's in dry dock, she's a fiction within a fiction of a closed area that's stocked in Hawaii and under postal treaty with the post office across the street. But we, when we went there, they did not. Yeah. When, it, when the bankruptcy ended, and when the decision timeline hit from the 10 year international moratorium from the bombing of Pearl Harbor to the end of the war. We went there and our timeline and said we filed the banking authorization for quantum banking in Hawaii. It's a legitimate contract because we can move assets through their or values target right now very easily. March 8th, 2013, Friday, my federal courthouse closes. Perfectly good building, foot and a half thick stone walls, $1.6 million building on Main Street. I go fishing. It's the weekend. I'm back Monday morning. It's a parking lot. Wow. Not only did they raise the building, but they, they turned it into a parking lot. They brought in 12 pieces of empty equipment, demolished it in 24 hours. That was amazing. And hauled it all the way and turned it into a parking lot. So there would be no federal court in Maui for me to prosecute the judges and treat the heads of the people and stealing over 2,200 homes without a title. True story. Absolutely amazing. I saw, we were so excited because you know, I, like, I go to this. Uh, all the time, being the postmaster general, and there's things that I'm doing on the background on that, and it, when I go to the down. When I go to the Fed Court, in Honolulu, all the all the marshals know me, know me on the Chief Federal Judge, and they'll salute me as I come in. Yeah. So, so is that stocky? No, I just have, <laughs> usually, I have anywhere from five to nine officers accompanying you in. No, I said, you went, went, you can't be you know, we went back in there. We go back to um, Honolulu and use that courthouse. Yeah, you because know, they knew what they were doing the post office. Then. So we went back to our authorizations there and they went back to the. What Dave and I did very uniquely and solitary is on uh, December 21st, 2012, 
New Washington the first post office in the United States, the Benjamin Franklin Post Office, next to uh, Independence Hall in Philadelphia. Um, they were being closed down, and we all they gave us a few day notice. And we went in there and authorized them to stay open under quantum grammar. We kept our contracts, so I put it in their vault, and we were in Philadelphia. And we are the 1775 Postmaster General. January 4th, 1775. Yeah. We ordered the court open under Title 42, 1986, for knowledge of a crime and authorization to stop and correct it. Under Title 28, Section 636. Yeah, we gave them our open a new court. We opened, we gave my passport. They tell them the, the whole museum was closed under construction. They brought in the janitor from the post office. Says you two guys are on special duty. We got the so up. They opened up the doors. They closed them behind us and gave us three hours ahead. We were getting secret secrets and doing things on the Benjamin Franklin manuscripts dealing with banking and some of the post roads back from the Virginia colony and some of the things that were done when he was being a triple agent for Britain. For England and for some of the things that was going on there, and we got some keywords that we needed to articulate specific things for our banking program. One of the things I want to show you guys is we bond our papers yeah. with super glue. There's three ways to bond paper you can stitch it, you can rivet it, and you can glue it. Super glue works very well because it's total penetrating like gasoline. And when it sets up, it puts it together. Now, a unique thing in the Hawaii. All the contracts in Hawaii, going all the way back to Elani Palace, have a hole punched right through the middle of it, no matter how many pages, and there's one ribbon that ties them all together. So they've been bonding with stitching in the Hawaiian Islands since all the treaties have made. So when we do it, when we come in, David and I filed for copyrights on the flag, and we filed for the land of the contract, which is the contract itself, which is very different than everything else. So wherever we go, there's the court. And so we filed that through a letter of derogatory through the Secretary of the State's office, registered it with the United Nations, and we are recognized as the ambassadors to the Title IV Grammar Flag, Title IV 1.9 Grammar Flag. This here is the contract since 1919, used in the Hawaiian Islands, to for all of Hawaiians get free housing and free water. All they had to do was sign the contract. Now, as you notice, even from back there, it's the State of Hawaii, pronoun adverb verb. Department, which means no, part, contract, is a pronoun, of is an adverb making Hawaii, Hawaiian to be an adjective, home to be an adjective, and lands to be a pronoun, but they're in the capital letters, not italics. Then they put the person's name in there. The name is spelled in all uppercase spelling, called a non Gare dead person. This is 1919. And this contract is 100%, eight pages, of italicized writing. Italics means to remove it from the paper so it's a blank sheet of paper all the way through. And when you take this, all italics, they get nothing, nothing in their name, only that they're known to hear dead people. And the only thing that's on here that's actually written in the correct grammar is the, uh, oh, here, description of the land that they're signing up for. So in 20 years being dead on the land, it's free for settlement. It's retitled in the United States of America Corporation. And that's how the United States stole the islands. And when we took it to court in 1997 at The Hague, The Hague says, where's your closure for using italics? And where's your closure for non bearing the names? And making the people dead under the 20-year death moratorium. This is 1919. In 1929, they had 100% of the people. They had to wait 20 years. 20 years from thir thir uh, 39 to 59, August, 12, 19, uh, August 25th, 1959, Hawaii becomes the 50th state of America. You see, these are timelines. And the unique thing about what I get to unwind this whole thing, being a 90 second degree Mason, is I know timelines. So when I saw an obituary published on January 8th, 1873, and I ran the numbers frontwards and backwards, including the first bankruptcy, World War I, and the sovereign 